Dan is working on his book, The Third Plate, and I was working on my book that became In Search of the Perfect Loaf. And we meet yeah. up at like conferences and things. Yeah. And Dan was like, how do you do this book shit? You know? Yeah. How, do you, how, does, how does this happen? You know? No, the truth is I was so competitive with you. I never <laughs> no, said that to no. you. I was so there worried was no that you were going to finish the book first. No, no. That, that was, you had that better was... sources than I did, that you knew more stuff than I did. <laughs> So, um, but we were, so you're we were a better both, writer than I am no. <laughs> it's a better and on and on. So, but we were, I knew from our discussions, we were kind of touching on similar things because I was writing about bread mm. and Dan, I knew was writing about farmers who do grains. And, um, right. so, so we didn't actually talk that much about our books, but we stopped but, talking, but, but here's what, that's happened. what happened. We, yeah, stopped, we talking. stopped talking. I didn't want to jinx it. Right. So here's what happened was our books came out. And it looked, I read his book, which is great. I really encourage you all to get it, The Third Plate. And he read my book and gave me a yeah. terrific blurb. And it was like our books were having the conversation. That's crazy. That's crazy. That we didn't yeah. have. Yeah, right. Because I was, writing about, I was writing about all of these breads and all of these grains that were made into breads, which essentially went by the byway in history. Right. And I explained that one of the reasons that happened was Farmers used to grow all of these wildly diverse crops because they were always hedging their bets about what might survive and what might not survive. And so one year you had rye, and the next year you had buckwheat, and the next year maybe you had wheat, you know, or you had spelt. And it wasn't, it wasn't out of choice, really. It was just you wanted something that was going to make it for the next harvest. And then you saved their seed. And all of these different seeds... Were made, were, were made into breads that created all of these wonderfully diverse breads, which are now for the most part lost, except for wonderful bakers like Peter here, Runner and Stone, who's bringing them back with like a buckwheat baguette, which is a really wonderful uh, bread. I'm standing in the middle of his field of a 2,000 acre farm and I didn't see any wheat at all. And, and what I saw instead was, was buckwheat and, and rye and barley and tons of cover crops and leguminous crops, uh, lots of bean crops and, and, and no, literally no wheat. And so what, what was explained to me and what became very clear was that while I was a farm to table chef, while I was, I was you know, uh, privileging and, and, and exalting this local wheat from this farmer, uh, Klaus Martens. Uh, I wasn't supporting any of the other crops that were going to support the soil that went to support his wheat. In other words, Klaus was was growing all of these crops to provide the fertility for the for his soil to give me stuff like the wheat that I I I became you know somewhat famous for 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 the breads we were making, and so I realized then that I I was kind of an emperor without clothes, and that I I you know for somebody who who was was riding their reputation on local wheat. I was doing nothing to support the system that supported the wheat. And that's what sort of changed the book and changed actually my cooking quite a bit. Mm -hmm.